السلام علیکم و رحمۃ اللہ وبرکاتہ اللہ اکبر اللہ اکبر اللہ اکبر اللہ اکبر اشہد اللہ الہ الا اللہ اشہد اللہ الہ الا اللہ اشہد ان محمد رسول اللہ اشہد ان محمد رسول اللہ حیاء للصلاة حیاء للصلاة حیاء للفلاة حي على الفلاح الله أكبر الله أكبر لا إله إلا الله الحمد للہ نحمد و نستعین و نستغفر و نتوب علیہ و نعوذ باللہ من شر انفسنا و سیعات اعمالنا من يهده اللہ فهو المحتد و من يدلل فلن تجد له ولیا مرشدا و اشہد اللہ الہ الا اللہ وحده لا شریک لہ و اشہد ان محمد عبده و رسوله We praise Allah, we seek his help and we seek his guidance. Anyone who's been guided by Allah, he is indeed guided. And anyone who's been misguided, there is no one to guide him. Ya ayyuhal ladheena aamunatakku la haqqa tukati wa la tamootuna illa wa antum muslimoon. O you who believe, fear Allah as he should be feared, and die not except as Muslims. I want to start by paraphrasing Surah Imran, Ayah 165. So will you say when disaster strikes you, where has this come from? Say to them, it has come from yourself. Indeed, Allah is able to do all things. So when disaster strikes you, you will say, where did this come from? And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala instructed the Rasul sallallahu alayhi wa sallam to say, it has come from yourself. A few months ago, when the election of the president happened and the results came out, the word disaster came to my head. I said, Ya Allah, you are going to test us. You're going to test this community in America that says, La ilaha illallah. We, the Muslims of America, are between 1 and 2 percent, a very super minority. And we live in a liberal, pluralistic society, in a very advanced society. And there is no other Muslim community that predates us that is facing the challenges that this Muslim community today is facing. Now we can probably go to the Japanese Americans or maybe the Jewish Americans to see some of the challenges that they faced that we are now starting to face. But we say Islam is not a religion. That Islam is a way of life. That Islam is a way of life. But all of you, like myself, average Muslims, we spend one hour a day plus or minus on prayer but one hour a day what are we doing for the other 23 hours of the day if Islam is a way of life 
and you're praying one hour a day, what are you doing for the other 23 hours? The problems we face today, we did not face it 25, 30 years ago. We have this radical terrorism that's going on that keeps repeating itself and keeps putting us in a very defensive posture. And some people say the Ummah is in a crisis. I think the Muslim individual is in a crisis. You and I, brothers and sisters, young and old, we are in a crisis. What about the Muslim individual? We never hear about the word the Muslim individual. We hear the Ummah, but you never hear what is the responsibility of a Muslim individual. We know the Ummah is in crisis, but what about the Muslim individual? I myself have been trained to think in the terms of Ummah, the Muslim Ummah, not what my personal responsibility is. Maybe we should have a dialogue, a debate. What are the responsibilities of a Muslim individual? What are the personal responsibilities? What are your ethical responsibilities? How do you give respect? How do you bring dignity? And I don't talk about the Muslim family, that there is a Sayyid before my name, or I am the descendant of so and so, or I am from the Quraysh, or I am from such and such tribe. We need to get out of that. We need to look at ourselves as individuals because we are thousands and thousands and thousands of individuals who make up the Ummah. In our success lies the success of the Ummah. And likewise when we talk about the Christians that are opposed to us, which is not a true statement. There are thousands and thousands of Christians who support us. So we need to look at Christians as individuals also, not as one group that are opposed to us. When there was talk about banning Muslims or Muslim registry, a lot of Christians said, I will register as a Muslim. Very famous people said that. Madeleine Albright, a Jewish Secretary of State said, I will register as a Muslim. So we cannot camp them in one group and us in another group because we're all individuals, every one of us. And we cannot look at our glorious past to think about our glorious future. All of us have self-interest at work. We need to get better educated. We need to get better finances. We need to have better careers. We need to have a better relationship with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Better relationship with our spouses, with our children. We are all individuals. And I want to talk about the individual responsibility. There is a word called Fard al Ain, the Fard of the individual, which is to do salah, which is to give zakat, to go to hajj. And there is something called Fard al Kifaya. The fard, the obligation of the community. So if there is a death in a Muslim family today, we can all be rest assured that someone else has made arrangements for a Muslim to have ghusl and a place to be buried in a cemetery by our religious edict and our culture. So that's for the kifaya. But if no one has done for the kifaya, if no one is providing that service, then that becomes for the ain. If no one has provided a Muslim burial place or for Muslim children to get an education in the deen, then that for the kifaya becomes for the ain. I have been in this country close to 40 years. And I've seen the rise of Islamophobia. And year after year it is getting worse. It's a very passionate subject to me. And we are not making much progress. 
So there is organizations, CARE, EMPAC, ISNA, AMCC, doing their part. But we are not making a dent. We are not making as much difference as we should. Because it's rising every year. We are outnumbered, outgunned, outspent. Now, if you say it's the community's responsibility to fight Islamophobia, and it is not getting better, maybe we should say it is for the ayn for us to combat Islamophobia. Thousands and thousands of you individuals who love Islam, who identify as Muslims, want to raise our children as Muslims, are going to be affected by Islamophobia. So if it becomes fard ayn and you talk to everybody at work, to your co-workers, to your neighbors, to the person you meet in the grocery store, we can slowly, as individuals, change hearts and minds. It might take us decades, but we are about two million strong in this country. Even if half of us, a million of us, would talk to 10, 15, 20 co-workers, as I did yesterday. If we did that, we could probably make a change. So that's for the ayn. We're very good about for the kifaya. We want to know, we want to tell Mr. Trump what he should do. We want to tell the president of the masjid what he should do. We want to tell the principal of the school what she must do. We want to tell our dad what he's not doing right. What about me? When do I ask myself, am I doing what I should be doing? Am I a Muslim that says, la ilaha illallah, what am I doing for my religion? What am I doing for my community? We need to ask this question of ourselves. Because you know the answer to what you have done and what you have not done. Only Allah knows and you know. No one else does. So I want to remind all of us that there's thousands and thousands of people like you and I that make up the Ummah. And we have an individual responsibility to do better. And this is how we're going to move forward as an Ummah if the individuals are successful, we cannot say it's the Ummah's problem, the Ummah is in a crisis. My brothers and sisters, you and I are in a state of crisis. So I want to remind myself that I have to do more for my Ummah to be successful. That I am responsible as an individual to do better for my ummah, aqulli kawli hada wa astaghfiruhu innu huwa al ghafoor ar rahim Allahumma salli ala sayyidina Muhammad wa ala ali sayyidina Muhammad kama sallaita ala sayyidina Ibrahim wa ala ali sayyidina Ibrahim innaka hamidun majid MashaAllah, a lot of masjids are doing a lot of good work. A lot of organizations are doing a lot of good work. And I've had lots of people come up to me, because at the present time, I am the chairman of the masjid. Brother, if we were more united, all these problems would go away. Brother, unity is the problem. We are not united. And I asked them, tell me one problem that can be solved through unity. And I get a lot of misconnected answers. Because we want to pass the buck. The problem we are having is because we are not united, brother. If we are united, we would not have this problem. If we did all Eids together, you think Islamophobia would go away? We have to be realistic because it's scapegoating that we are not united. Now unity means different things to different people. Young people and old people may not agree 
to the definition of unity. Brothers and sisters may not agree. Conservative and liberals may not agree. Rich and poor may not agree. I would like uniformity more than unity. But I would like to give you a great example. We live in the best country of the world. The United States of America. How united is the United States of America? Even if you paid very little attention to the elections that just happened, how united was the United States of America? Republicans were attacking Republicans. Democrats were atta attacking Republicans. Men against women. Whites against minorities. Native born against immigrants. Liberals versus conservatives. Black versus white. How united is the United States of America? But all Americans are united when it comes to becoming the superpower of the world. All Americans want the best military in the United States. All Americans want America to have the best research facilities. All Americans want to have the best education, the best highest paying jobs in America, the best freeway system, the best telecommunication, the best entertainment. Despite the disunity in America, America is very successful. Now let's look at Islam. Whether you're a Wahhabi, a Sufi, a Sunni, a Shia, a liberal, conservative Muslim, all of us agree on the five pillars of Islam. All of us agree in the Tawheed, in the oneness of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. All of us agree in the Tawakkul, that we trust Allah. All of us, we believe that feeding the poor and taking care of the orphans is a requirement of Islam. All of us believe that being kind and taking care of our parents is a must. So Muslims agree on a lot of things. Yet America is successful and the Muslims in America are not. Americans are disunited, Muslims are disunited. Americans agree on a lot of things, Muslims agree on a lot of things. But Muslims are not as successful a community as the Jewish community, the Japanese community, in some cases even the Latino community. So we can go back to Ayah 165 of the Imran. Where has this come from? This disaster, where has it come from? The answer is, it has come from yourself. That's the answer. It's come from yourself. I came to America in 1979 as an 18 year old. At the height of the hostage crisis in Iran. 40, I'm sorry, 52 American citizens were taken hostage in Tehran for 444 days. Muslims were misbehaving and Islam was thrown under the bus. All my life I've been an avid reader of the newspaper and watching the news. I didn't hear one person defending Islam. I heard hundreds and hundreds of articles and denigrating Islam. And I go, where are the Muslim voices? How come nobody is defending Islam? I was an 18 year old. I was scared of my shadow. And nobody was speaking one word about Islam. Everybody was insulting Islam. And it affected me deeply. I was an immigrant. I was 18 years old. And I go, where are the Muslim voices? And I didn't hear one. And 21 years later on, another disaster hit. Some more Muslims misbehaved and Islam was thrown under the bus during 9-11. This time I was ready. I put my voice. I went on TV and I wrote articles and I went to churches and I went to many, many places to talk about Islam. But we were drowned out. We were outnumbered. We were outspent. 
In many cases, we were even outsmarted. There was nothing we could do to turn the tide. And then 15 years later, a man that ran on a platform of banishing Muslims from this country wins the election. And within two weeks, the ban on nine countries and Syrian refugees for coming into America played out. I read a very great quote from Imam Tahir Anwar. He's in the Bay Area of California. He had visited AMCC once. He did a youth program for us. And this is what he wrote. For all of us that haven't done anything in the last 15 years since 9-11, but became slaves of our careers and of our lifestyle, letting a very few people do the work, this is your wake-up call. Get involved in any capacity. Fill your weekend with non-profit work, not parties. Fill your weekend with non-profit work, not parties. Fill your afternoons by volunteering, not fancy lunches. Spend your money on causes, not on things. Support those around you who actually do the work. I almost cried when I read that. Because this is such a true reflection of the Muslims in America 2017. Let this be a wake-up call for us. We cannot just let a few people do all the work. I see all of us here, I see Team Islam. We are a team Islam, we are Team Islam. We have a lot of people in the bleachers, spectators, and very few players. Very few players. We need more players. We need the players to practice. And we need the players to exercise. We need the players to have a good diet. We need the players to be dedicated, to play their A game. We have too many spectators and not enough players. You cannot win a game if you only play defense. You cannot win a game if you only play defense. What are Muslims doing? Islam is a religion of peace. We condemn terrorism. End of story. We are playing defense. We have no offense player. No, we have no offense game plan. Because we are playing defense. So just leave me alone. Let me live my lifestyle. But that's not how Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala planned for us. If we don't play the game well, if we don't have goalkeepers, and we don't have good co coaches, and we don't have good forward players, defense players, we will never make it to the playoffs. We will never make it to the Super Bowl. Those of you who watched the Super Bowl about two weeks ago, the New England Patriots at halftime were blown away. They were way behind. But in the second and the third and the fourth quarter, they put their heart into the game. All their practice, all their exercise, all their hunger for winning. They turned the match around. They came from behind and won the Super Bowl. My brothers and sisters, are you hungry enough? Are you angry enough? Are you dedicated? Are you willing to practice? Are you willing to exercise? Are you willing to change your diet? Do you want to win this game? We will never make it to the Super Bowl. We will never make it if we only play defense. If we don't put our first best players out, 
we will not win this game our children and our grandchildren are going to inherit marginalization and they are going to inherit islamophobia this is not the gift i want to give my grandchildren so all of us have some skin in the game if you choose not to do something you have made a choice if you choose not to do something you have made a choice and there's thousands of us individuals we can step up you can join an organization or you can do it on your own you don't need an organization you can say i am muhammad i am ibrahim i am jamila i am aisha allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has given me intellect allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has given me wealth has given me good health i am an able person i am going to do something about it i am not going to go business as usual we don't need a khalifa in turkey and we don't need a khalifa in arabia all of us are the khalifas every one of us is a khalifa we are a khalifa in our hearts we are khalifa in our minds we are khalifa in our souls we are the khalifas of this planet earth we don't need a khalifa some place else we have a khalifa inside of us that we have kept bottled up it's time to let the inner khalifa out take charge of our lives the future is looking bleak if we allow it to but if we get together we can make a change so i do dua that allah remove laziness from our heart Amen. that allah give do not let our hearts deviate from the truth o oh allah grant us bounties without measure o oh allah perfect our prayer o oh allah accept our prayer o oh allah forgive me and my parents and all believers until the day of judgment o oh allah help the refugees and their families shower them with your mercy and help o oh allah increase us in knowledge o oh allah give us the wisdom to apply the knowledge O Allah, make us more compassionate. O Allah, make us more tolerant. Make us more understanding. O Allah, seek the cure uh, and help the disabled. O Allah, decrease our shortcomings. O Allah, we acknowledge the blessings you showered upon us. We acknowledge our shortcomings. So forgive us for none forgive sins but you. Subhana rabbika rabbil izzati amma yasifun. Wassalamun al-mursaleen. Walhamdulillahi rabbil alameen.